Kyoto time gives you a small window to jump after falling off a ledge. This makes games feel more responsive and polished. If you find this helpful, please subscribe, so let's slide in. So we'll start by opening up Gro, and I've prepared a player scene here, and I'm going to add a timer, and I'm going to rename this timer to Kyoto timer. Next, I'm going to attach a script to the player 3D, so I'm going to call this player, and I'm going to have template enabled for basic movement. I'm going to hit create, and we want to make a new variable in here, which I'm going to call Kyoto time active, and I'm going to set this to true. And inside of the physics process function, under the if not is on floor, I'm also going to check if the timer, which I'm going to right click and access as unique name. I'm going to drag it in here. And if it is stopped, I'm going to start it again. So I'm going to drag it in again and dot start. And then I'm going to make an else statement if I'm on the floor. So this is if I'm on the floor. And if I'm on the floor, I'm going to make the Kyoto time active to true. And I'm going to stop the timer. So drag that in again and stop. And inside of the if statement that handles jumping, instead of checking if we're on the floor, I'm going to check if the Kyoto time active is true. And if it is, we're going to make it false. And then we can select the Kyoto timer. And the wait time is how long you will have Kyoto time for. For most games, I would recommend around 0.2. Then go into node. And under signals, you want to connect the timeout signal and connect that. And inside of here, we want to make the Kyoto time active equal false. And if we save this and run it now, so this means you have 0.2 seconds to jump while you're falling off a ledge. So let's go over the code. We have a Kyoto time active bool which is set to true and if we're not on the floor that means we jumped or fell off a ledge and if we did we check if the timer is stopped and if it is we start the timer and then the else statements this means that we're on the floor and then the Kyoto time should be true and the timer should be stopped if we're on the ground then where we handle the jumping we are checking the Kyoto time active instead of the is on floor so as long as the Kyoto time active is true, we can jump. And if we do jump, we set Kyoto time active to false again. So this means that the Kyoto time active will always be true unless we jump or if the timer wait time runs out. And that allows us to jump even when we're falling off a ledge. And if you want to give the player more or less time, you can just change the wait time. Precise platformers could probably benefit from 0.21 seconds. While some FPS games would probably recommend maybe 0.2 or 0.3, since you can't see the floor. I'm going to be making a follow-up video, which will cover jump buffering. That is a technique that allows you to jump if you press space right before you land. And all games with jumping should have that feature as well. I recommend giving that a watch. This video was based on a tutorial by Shaft Games, which is linked below. Thanks for watching and special thanks to the Kofa members for making this video possible. If you want to support my work and have your name be featured in future videos, check out my Kofa in the description and I'll see you in the next one.